This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I'm gonna go walk the sugar apples. Uh, see, see what's going on with them, and um, do a little follow-up video to my uh, rare aroids, the uh, rare philodendrons. I did a video on yesterday, 57 philodendrons, and I got a few interesting comments. Um, one of the, one of my, uh, one of my people, um, thought that I, uh, this was a, a philodendron micans, but the micans has red new growth. This is a little node cutting, a philodendron melanochrysum. And, um, I forgot to mention the micans. I forgot to mention a few philodendrons, so I, you know. My math while I do these videos is never any good and I really don't edit anything. So, um, but this Milano Chrysum, it just grows like a weed now. I mean, it's like similar to the Gigas. Um, the Gigas has been a little bit slower growing, but this Milano Chrysum is fast. So over here, I forgot to mention these. So you can see on the, um, the um, uh, micans, this is the micans right here. Um, it has red new growth, it looks totally different. Similar, the leaves can look similar, but um, they're definitely black on the uh, Milano Chrysum. So I have a philodendron micans here and a philodendron silver sword. And I have a leaf cutting of a uh, philodendron Brazil there. Everything else in here is Monster, I believe. This is a philodendron mus uh, Chironia Moscara. Here's that new leaf on the Parisa Verde. I, rip, I accidentally ripped the leaf off. The other one, this plant is so freaking beautiful. It grows so well and likes a lot of water. So it basically can sit in water. Uh, another person thought that the video yesterday was on um, growing the growing outside or growing inside, but it's I just happen to grow them outside because I live in Florida and I can do it. But the temperature always changes; it just fluctuates, and so. I grow everything the same way in our biodynamic compost. So the finished compost, it's humus. You could poke your finger right through it. Um, you could push your whole hand through it. It's just pure humus and it holds the perfect amount of water. And the aeroids all grow perfectly in it. And um, most people don't grow in that. They like buy cocoa chips and perlite and sphagnum moss. And, chopped up wood that's not broken down already and then they add water to it so if that sits and, st and then they add uh, slow release fertilizers so that's what I was talking against the slow release fertilizers inside your house because <clears throat> they're made from pollutants a lot of them the slow slow release fertilizers especially so I forgot to mention the philodendron fibra pedophilum I love this one. This is like a philodendron ornatum with the uh, more corrugated leaf. Uh, I love it. I love that corrugation. So this is philodendron um, felix. Uh, I, forgot, I think I forgot to mention that one yesterday. So yeah, it was, it was talking about people that grow hydroponically indoors. So with, when you grow an artificial uh, medium like that, then you have to keep the uh, humidity, the temperature, the light perfect, or the plants quickly go downhill. So when you grow naturally, the plants are able to take the changes in the atmosphere and the environment. And um, the... Uh, volatile organic compounds they release into the air that you're living in are not going to be full of chemical nutrients. 
because everything moves through the air and water. So, um, uh, Houseplant Heaven or Hell uh, was the one that uh, did that. I like his videos. They're very uh, informative and um, smart. I like them. Um, so he has this uh, Philodendron Panatta, <sighs> Panatta Lobum AFF from Aquagenera. I got this plant about, I don't know, four months ago as a tiny little plant. Um, had these little leaves down here. Wasn't that tiny, but it wasn't very big. And then it quickly started grow, started to grow up. And it's, um, the leaves at the top are fairly big now, but um, they get bigger with age. Um, I was surprised somebody did a video on this because I really like this video and, or this, this video, this, uh, this philodendron. It's kind of got a nice leaf shape that I like. <clears throat> I noticed it likes water. So he had issues with the bottom leaves falling off and the, the uh, top leaves being very small and just like all at the top. But that's some sort of nutrient imbalance. Um, when you grow unnaturally, you don't get the nutrient. Uh, your plant doesn't uptake the correct amount of nutrients. Hence, it can't support its immune system to function well under environmental stress, like not enough humidity or too hot or too cold. So, um, Humus gives the plant the right amount of nutrients it needs. <clears throat> That's what it does. It's the difference between natural farming and unnatural farming. <clears throat> so it's, uh, you know, we start everything in biodynamic compost that we make here, all our seeds and stuff. Um, the large seeds I direct sow into the ground. I need to get a, um, Need to get a uh, pair of clippers. They're pretty, these house plants. I see why people get obsessed with them, but then they, they like put hydroponic growth systems in their house or industrial nursery systems in their house. <clears throat> They can't let them sit in standing water because when you have dead wood that hasn't been totally broken down and transformed into humus, then, um, or mostly broken down, <clears throat> you can have some active, but it has to be a uh, aged active organic matter. Um, so then the, the, when they water them, if you leave them sitting in standing water, that, that, that carbon that's you have in the standing water that's not broken down already, releases carbon dioxide that is when water is added, it makes carbonic acid. So that's why when you have uh, plants, nursery plants, at the very bottom, the roots look like they're all burned. That's because all that carbonic acid is sitting at the bottom in that organic matter. That's what that's from. It burns the roots. <clears throat> Same way with wood chips on compacted sand <clears throat> during heavy rain. It does the same thing. That's probably why uh, the muck in the waterways in Florida, it's a lot of nutrients, but it makes a very acidic water because it's, you know, it's when it's breaking down, it's making carbonic acid. So that's why that happens. And it, it eats at calcareous rock, which is what we're on in Florida, which creates a deeper sinking, um, lower, wetter environment. <clears throat> Recedes the soil. So here's the, sh the uh, Kampong mauve red sugar apples. They just never have been a real big producer for us. Um, Granted, this spot right here where these compong mobs are is not the best spot. It's a strip of driveway and the neighbor <clears throat> uh, 
sprays uh, glyph or Roundup in the ditch. There's a ditch on the other side of the fence there, so uh, it's not really the best spot for um, maximum benefits from a natural growing system. Uh, Roundup affects plant um, hormones, so especially mangoes are highly affected by it. So I don't expect those to ever be real good. There's some mangoes in there. I have a cha-cha in there. So I've got enough plants and I've warned them, please do not spray anymore. Um, I have enough plants in there that this has to be, this is what I have to do. I have to chop off the old fruit. I've realized the fruit that starts turning black, I don't want on there because those just don't make good fruit. It's a learning experience, the whole um, uh, farm system, becoming a farm um, is a learning experience that I get better and better at every day, but I didn't grow up doing this. I kind of like to grow roses and cacti, succulents. <clears throat> But now I'm a, a freaking fruit farm. Um, I'm not going to tolerate any black spots on my mangoes, or my, my mangoes, my sugar apples. Yes, I misspeak a lot, actually. Uh, and I don't edit my videos, so I wouldn't be surprised if I made mistakes calling something something. And um, when it was supposed to be something else. But... Uh, Oh well, that's called old age, I guess. My brain kind of starts shutting down when it starts getting hot also, so for some reason. So this is a prime example of what needs to go. Uh, this is like a not gonna be good. So I kind of guarantee my fruit. Um, so if somebody buys fruit from me and they don't like it or it didn't ripen right or whatever, you got a credit for those fruits. So don't hesitate to redeem them in on uh, new uh, uh, on fruit that's that's uh, fruit that's should be good, you know, because. I screwed up on the black sapote picking and um, I may have picked some of my sugar apples a little early, but I'll make it right. I got a whole box of uh, a cha-cha fruit that I bought last year and all of it was rotten. So they refunded my whole all my money. That's the whole problem with fruit. You don't have to do that with seeds. If the seeds don't germinate, generally people won't buy them from you again. Um, so I only sell fresh seeds, but the whole fruit thing, fruit is so much more unpredictable that that's what causes me a lot of stress. But I think um, guaranteeing our fruit uh, takes some of that pressure off me because most everyone comes back to buy fruit a second time. So, in fact, I think everyone has. I'm trying to think if anybody hasn't. <clears throat> or plans on it. Because I get people coming here from all over the place. Uh, as far away as Idaho. California, of course. So these fruits are not, oh, I see this one up there was ripe, but it's way up in the tree. I'm probably gonna have to prune these things for height so that I can uh, pick the fruit easier. These Atamoyas are, this has been so dry. This is by far the driest year we've ever had here um, in summer. Um, but it doesn't seem like it's affecting anything. Yes, in the afternoon, the plants 
look like they're under severe drought stress, but that's only because to conserve water, they shut off their stomata and don't intake carbon dioxide or oxygen. Don't take any in any gas through their leaves. So um, the leaves look wilted, but in the morning when you see them, they're all perky and sugar apples never seem to like get phased by the drought from what I've been able to see. But I'm sure it does affect the uh, speed of ripening and the size of the fruit. Um, but I don't know that for sure, but it would have to. But I know that sugar apples and the nonas in general don't like a lot of excess water. So these sugar apples all look pretty good still. They're just not ready. It's like I had an early little crop and then it's like nothing. Um, oh, so this is a tiny one that ripened on the tree. It's a little tiny sugar apple with an ant in it. Mm. Well, this is very good. Beautiful. Those seeds are like 50 cents each. Or, yeah, 50 cents each. Chewy sugar apples. Mm. They're good. I mean, that fruit was just a little too tiny to even think about selling um, probably but it would have been a good one to let people taste mm -hmm. so yeah this is like horrible this is what I don't like, seeing uh, black spots like that. I'm just going to cut that off because none of the other fruit have it. So, um, so okay size, but they don't look like they're ready now. It looks like most of the sugar apples have like they were like moving along towards ripening, but then the rains just never came. So I see there's all kinds of flower on some of them. Um, this one has a bunch of fruit on it. It's got huge flowers. This, these flowers will make fruit. They're big giant flowers. Little flowers like that will not make fruit, but the big ones, they'll make the fruit. It's a nice looking tree. Okay, here's my chewy purple sugar apple. Uh, we have one tree of this. Um, I bought six seeds, I don't know, a few years ago, and two germinated and one survived. I see it's uh, quite a healthy tree though. That's not ready yet. My little sugar cane cuttings I did in here. Some of them made it, some didn't, but they're in here with the bananas and the mulberries and the sugar apples and the anamoyas. Plant some cashews in here I don't see coming up. I imagine they're waiting for the rain too before they show themselves. There's a whole bunch of sugar apples, but they're just not ready at the moment. Have somebody coming by from uh, I don't know where they're from, but they uh, are driving over from the west coast. Wanted to come here at ten rather than nine. I don't like to give tours after starting after nine because it's too hot in the summer. Probably in the winter I could do it, but. Um, and then they're bringing their parents, which I generally don't do, but I realize they might uh, need a ride. So um, I made an exception. I only don't do the family because I am more of a one-on-one -on -one person. 
And um, if I have one person listening to me and two in the back laughing, it's very distracting to me um, <coughs> and hard for me to give a vi uh, give a video, <laughs> explain everything that is going on in real time because I guess get distracted and forget what's there. So I'm just going to look at some of this little citrus um, that we have growing from seed. Here's a key lime. The old leaves are getting ready to drop off and the new leaves are looking quite not nice. Um, so cha-cha. This is a jackfruit that fruited last year, but it hasn't bloomed yet this year, but I think the freeze had something to do with that, possibly. Um, looks like it might... It's a grafted tree, nursery started tree. Um, it's a seed grown tree, jack, jackfruit. Uh, here's a uh, little bananas planted in here. I got all kinds of little stuff in here. Um, there's a little citrus. Um, a pigeon pea growing right next to it. There's citrus. This citrus is quite large and uh, I thought there was a, a track fruit in there. But you know, this is stuff I planted over the winter. Here's a Kwai Muk. I know that's Kwai Muk. Um, tree. It's like two of them. Um, I thought there was a citrus in here too, but I don't see the citrus anymore. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I'm just blown away that you can grow all this stuff. Um, tiny little seed grown trees. This is something I learned to plant little tiny trees like that when I was a small child. I think in Cub Scouts in Mendocino County, California. Planting redwoods in Jackson State. Um, demonstration forest. I was probably like, I don't know, nine, eight. And I could have been seven. And... Um, little tiny uh you know i guess they're called uh those little tiny like long tall uh pots but like they're one by one with little tiny trees in it and just take the shovel and put the tree up behind it and stamp it and move on and so i that's what i do here and it's, it works i mean it's kind of amazing that you can do it with these rare tropical fruit trees or, you know, citrus is not considered that rare, but the citrus and um, they all grow. <clears throat> they all wouldn't have grown if I'd started in lawn, you know, when I first started. It took a while. I've done a lot of stuff. I do a lot of stuff. I do something every day year round in input. I apply inputs year round every day, so. Um, to act like this is neglected is like um, just crazy. There's a little seed grown mangoes. <clears throat> I thought I planted some. Oh, there's a cashew here. Cashew. This is some sort of energy thick or energy nitrogen <laughs> fixing. Um, plant that grows seasonally here. I like it. It looks like a rose almost. Banana. I go look at this Luke's Garcinias over here because I haven't looked at them in a while. Make sure I don't step on anything else. This Eki tree um, I thought died from the freeze. There's a little mango right there. Um, okay, where's that path at? I think it's right here. Uh, I have to re redo it because I haven't done it in so long. Oh, 
sugar cane. Cassava, 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 pigeon pea. There's lots of stuff. Um, there's a, a Luke's Garcinia. They're starting to like pull themselves up, do their thing. Um, I know I have a little path right here because I come over and look at this periodically. Not often, but here's a, a Luke's Garcinia. There's a bunch more through there, but I haven't really walked through there in a long time. And looks like it has grapevines growing, growing in my way, so I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to go look at the cacao a little bit. While I'm out here, the seedlings. Um, just get up close and personal. So I have like plumeria there. And then I see I have a sugar loaf mango right here, seed grown. It's been a little slow grower, that one. Um, that's caused by compaction when something's not growing. I mean, it kind of just makes sense. If nutrients can't flow through the uh, soil, the tree is not going to be able to spread its roots <clears throat> and grow. I mean, it's all just kind of common sense. Uh, but I just, you know, here's a little uh, guanabana seedling. Uh, where is it? It's right here. I planted about a hundred of those, but that's the only one I can identify. Um, I'm sure there's others growing, but um, I just, you know, I haven't walked on them. I don't want to walk on them. <laughs> okay, I'm look at the, uh, yeah. The, uh, here's a little uh, achacha seedling. Here's a seed grown uh, mango, sugarloaf. Sugarloaf is one of my favorites, but yeah. uh, I wasn't growing out all the seeds before of all the mangoes, but I started doing that um, after I planted those. I was just planting certain ones. So, uh, Garcinia Livingstonii, the MB. It's a male tree. I'm pretty sure, or this tree has not fruited yet, or flowered yet. So this one I haven't identified yet, but I'm guessing it's a, a male tree, because that's usually what they are. Um, there was a... There was a uh, Garcinia dulcis around here somewhere, which I can't see now. Um, that's the problem with the, you know, the weeds. <coughs> you can lose track of what you have in the ground. That's why it's best just to stay off of it. So there's a cha-cha has had a bunch of uh, weeds growing on it. But the cacao, boy, look at the cacao. They're like. They're starting to grow up good. I mean, dry farm cacao that looks like that during times of drought. Summer drought in Florida is just... So this is after we got, look at all the bugs in the, in the orchard floor. They look really healthy too. Um, just really, really healthy trying to see if I can see any uh, Luke's Garcinia popping up through here because I know there's a bunch. I think I might see one right there. But I can't tell for sure. I'm sinking in the soil. So there's another cacao. There's a, a cha-cha. There's another cacao. They're all through here. I think we've got 30 30 uh 
seed grown cacao that are established now. Um, meaning they've survived more than a year without any watering. Um, no water from the time we plant them and put grow them, plant them just like I plant the citrus. So tiny little seedlings planted into this. This ain't something horrible like monster grass or whatever, the elephant grass. This is like a woodland weedy mess. <clears throat> so it wasn't, this was not here when I moved here. This is all stuff that uh, self-established. Except for my uh, fruit trees. This tree is so giant. Um, I want to know where those wood ducks all had their babies. Uh, or, you know, because they lay their eggs up in old trees. They have to be a certain size and like crevices like that. And um, I've seen the wood ducks up here last year. So I'm thinking maybe that's where they were this year. Uh, but I'd never, we'd never had wood duck babies on our pond. Our pond dried out for the first time, the one by the house. Um, it's like a swamp pond. It was for drainage, but we don't, have any standing water issues even in our man-made low spots to manage water we just don't have standing water even after six inches of rain um, <clears throat> it might get some like parts in here that had standing water but um, after like several days of like three inches of rain every day for a week then it might have some low parts that have like two inches of water in it but the entire thing is not, it was like, would be 20 feet across of solid water when this was a lawn uh, all summer long. It was good for frogs having babies in there, but you couldn't get across it without um, wading up to your knees in hot water. And those standing water areas that have dead carbon in them create carbonic acid. So they eat the rock structure underneath the soil, the uh, calcareous rock. And so they, they keep lowering. Um, I see that going on with my neighbors uh, pasture that they put three feet of fill on and then proceeded to mow every month um, with the tractor or lawnmower um, to keep the grass short to keep weeds out but when you do that in Florida you compact the soil and basically all you're growing is sedge you just don't see that it's sedge because it never seeds but that's what grows in compacted soil in Florida and then the lawn ponds started on their property. And I see that the lawn ponds are taking on like the shape of a, uh, a pond when the water dries. So like they have like a rim now. Um, so it's definitely eating something. It's, it's, uh, it's gotta be the carbonic acid eating the calcium. <clears throat> Causing subsidence. Your flies. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take to fix Florida. Probably everything to die off first would be my guess. And then people might get mad, but probably not. They'll probably just get used to it. Everyone just sits inside their house anyway. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> they sit in the air conditioning. Not me, I like it outside. I'm an out outdoor person. Um, until I get too hot. But I try to spend like five, five hours a day out here, um, every day. These uh, black sapotes are 
They look to be setting quite a bit of fruit again. It's like a super producer here. Um, these are nursery started trees. I thought they needed water, but they seem to do better without water. <clears throat> I found mangoes yesterday. I love it. I was looking at a couple trees. I'm like, what is that? Is that a mango in there? It's like, oh yeah, it is. Um. <laughs> mango. I'm going to go look at the Guanabana tree and then I guess mention something about the a peach cobbler tree. Somebody wanted to know about that peach cobbler mango tree. Maybe I'll see a mango on it. I truly doubt it, but um, I want to see what that uh, Guanabana tree. This is a big Eugenia calicina. It's got like a black fruit on it. It's delicious. Produces a lot of fruit. I plant a lot of the seeds from it. I don't have any seeds of that for sale. I liked it. It's a santal tree. Uh, we have three santal trees. This is the smallest one. There's lots of uh, chachas and stuff I planted through here. And, you know, Garcinia madrunos. And... That's a good spot to, to grow, uh, to plant seeds of chachas. This is why we don't need to do chop and drop. It kind of does it on its own. Um, it's the Ingus spectabilis tree, our biggest one. Uh, well, yeah, it's still the biggest one. We have a two-year-old tree that's getting ready to pass this by. Um, seems fine. Grown from seed. Seed came from Fruit Lovers Nursery, Oscar. Um, it's a orange sherbet tree that gave us a lot of fruit. This tiny little tree gave us like 20 fruit this year, I believe. 19, I counted them, I forget. They were good. Um, this is a two year old tree. Um, here is a M4, is it? No, Fruit Punch. This is Fruit Punch. It should be bigger than this, but this tree struggled with, um, you know, these were all planted from three gallons, these uh, three gallons from Zills. Uh, and this one struggled with fungal issues, but it seemed to uh, outgrow them. And um, it does produce fruit. It produced, all these trees produce fruit the first year they were in the ground. So we had such a bump, bumper year last year, but this year there was about half as many mangoes due to the freeze two days of freeze um that we've never experienced before uh, but most of the trees made it this is the peach cobbler tree i believe that i did in the videos that produced lots of fruit last year i think all the fruit fell off this tree this year um that's okay this is just a two year from from three gallon in the ground two and a half years now about but um it's growing next to this big Guanabana tree that survived the freeze just fine. Um, it always has, it's, you know, no water. It is, uh, should be big enough to fruit, but it's not even flowering at the moment. I'm sure water has a, a reason for that, um, lack of, but I know that the, uh, Guanabana tree will eventually produce fruit for us um, here in this part of Florida. It's just everything is at its own pace. Once it gets a certain size root structure, it just is tapped into the aquifer and um, <clears throat> doesn't appear like it needs any water. I mean, it's huge. Just like our Rolinia. 
but neither one of them have produced fruit yet. We have two Rolinians. I planted a hundred Rolinia in the lawn and I watered with uh, water that was calcium carbonate infused in a uh, compacted soil into the lawn. And um, I killed all the ones that I watered with that uh, deep well water. That, you know, a 550 foot deep. It's a cal calcium carbonate infused um, aquifer water, which is probably has the potential to be polluted, so we don't use anymore. I just don't want to take any chance, and things don't need it. I mean, this is the drought in Florida. It's a lot different than the drought in California. Um, the citrus are looking good. This is one of our seed-grown citrus from, you know, from, from our fruit. And um, I don't know why that one doesn't have any fruit on it. This one does. This was a really bad compacted area. So these trees in this area were um, slower. But the birds did not get. They did not come for this one tree that has this two, I'm seeing two fruit on it. This is just a three year old tree from seed. So two fruit, the first th three years um, is excellent, I think. Because <clears throat> I know next year it'll probably produce uh, a bounty, hopefully. Maybe not. But we have some that are. These are the mangoes that froze. Um, we don't remove the dead wood. It doesn't get any of those beetles in it. Uh, it does get fungi in it. That's what that is. Not beetles. Um, and that looks like it's got a black shoulder fly, or what is that? Is that a wasp? I think it could be a wasp. It's got antennas. I don't know. I'm not an entomologist. I don't claim to be. I just want to know how stuff grows. There's a, a Ross Sapote. This was a fruiting Ross Sapote tree that <clears throat> got hit by the freeze. This is the only one that got hit by the freeze. But it's coming back very well. Um, this was a really bad compacted area because there was a chain link fence right here um, that I'm sure that they sprayed with glyphosate year after year from the 80s on. But I think after seven years of, six and a half years of <clears throat> focusing on soil health and um, looking at the whole system and letting nature into it, uh, focusing on the fungal life in the soil and uh, applying nutrients for fungi, um, It's probably uh, mostly fixed. So this is the citrus that gets peck, got pecked by the birds, but they haven't been doing it. So they do it during a certain time of year, I guess. And um, it's not greening. It's just on top of the fruit where the birds pecked it. it took me a year to figure out what happened. Cause it's like you get a crop of fruit and you see it looks like this. And it's like, what is that? And you know, it's not greening because um, It's not greening. Um, it's from the birds. So they didn't get this fruit because it was hidden in here, but it looks like they got one peck on it. Um, but these, this citrus produces so much fruit. This is a four year old tree from seed. And uh, I'm just blown away by it. the productivity. Uh, lemons kind of come true to seed. Our lemon does. Uh, I haven't seen any oddball fruits from our lemon um, this is a really good lemon too. Um, super juicy with seeds. That's just super productive in Florida. I mean, without any inputs. This is, this is the natural input. That's nature's input. That's nature's chop and drop. Anyway. 
is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and I hope you have a 